So, uh, as always, thanks for tuning in to the uh, Patrick Miller stream. Um, today, I thought I would talk about Guilty Gear and Guilty Gear Xrd because uh, they're fantastic games. The Xrd just came out on Steam, and it's pretty cool. It's on sale right now for I think like twenty percent off or something with a DLC, so you can get it for like twenty three bucks. Um, I played a good amount of Xrd back when it first came out, especially because I was surrounded by a ton of people in SoCal who were playing it. Shoutouts to Paul and Monique and everyone at the Anime House, Sanchez, Nerd Josh, etc. Um, and uh, I've also been playing Guilty Gear pretty much kind of off and on since XX came out in 2003. And it's a really special series to me. I like it a lot. And um, I was super happy to see the kind of the anime scene and the Guilty Gear scene in particular keep on uh, surviving and, and, and doing their thing for like basically the, the I don't know, roughly 10 years between XX and Xrd. Um, and, I'm, and I've been super glad lately to see anime specific events, uh, right? Or anime focused events like Frosty Faustings um, or uh, CEO Taku, right? Um, even getting to see a lot of the stuff that Jiuna is doing over in Japan. I stopped by Tokyo uh, a couple months ago and it's super cool just to stop by and get rocked in Guilty Gear. Um, but yeah, it's Guilty Gear is kind of a special place in my heart and I felt like for, uh, this is especially for people who never kind of got into anime games or for people who, you know, just got into fighting games with Street Fighter 4, one of the newer games, and don't really understand uh, the the kind of the the anime scene, so to speak. I thought I'd talk a little bit about how I got into Guilty Gear, um, why I still play it, also why I don't play it as actively as I used to, um, but why it's, in my mind, it's it truly is the the, the fighting game for people who love 2D fighting games. Um, it is that that franchise, and maybe, I don't know anything about Blaze Blue, so I'm gonna caveat this, like, I never got into Blaze Blue. It, it didn't feel right the first few times I played it, so I never gave it a chance. Um, but in my mind, Guilty Gear is the, the game series for people who love 2D fighting games. Uh, it is also the fighting game that will show you how much you actually love 2D fighting games. And to elaborate on that, I'll start by talking a little bit about how I got into Guilty Gear way back in the day. Um, so it was, I was just about to graduate high school. This was in 2003 and I was going to the, I, I was going to the UC Berkeley Barricade. That was the arcade that I frequented back then. Pretty much every day after school, I second semester senior year was dope. I I got a schedule that that let me get out at pretty much like one o'clock every day, and so I just go go to the arcade and play there from like I get there around like one thirty and I play to like five or six, right? And at this point, I've been playing CVS two for about three years or so. Yeah, about 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 two or three years. This is the longest and deepest I've ever gone into any game ever. And I was starting to get a little bit tired of it. It was the game that I was focusing on. I didn't really like Third Strike that much. And I'd, I'd played plenty of Third Strike at this point, plenty of Marvel, plenty of Super Turbo, Turbo. But I was getting basically outclassed in that game because I was playing against uh, people like, like Ricky or Eric Choi over at the Barricade or even some of the other ba Barricade dudes like Tae Hong. Um, basically... The, 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 the people who are really good at executing were just out, outclassing me. Um, I didn't put enough work into roll canceling or custom combos, and I wasn't good enough at playing K-Groove to really be able to hold my own. So it wasn't, though, it wasn't as though I was getting bodied by everybody, but I definitely hit like a hard limit in terms of how, in terms of the results I was seeing in CBS2 and my tournament performance. And back then, when I'm like a hungry 18-year-old, that shit meant a lot to me. And so I was, I was kind of like... I was running into one of those barriers, right? As you do. And then one day, the, the arcade manager, Dan, brought in a new machine, Guilty Gear XX. And I looked at it and I was like, oh, I had heard a little bit about the series. I think Sunnyvale had an XX cabinet a couple months before the Barricade did. And so I played once or twice there. My friend Ed actually tried to get me into it. He's like, hey, come here, just show, uh, just, let me just show you this game. It's really cool. And I was like, oh, well, that, that looks really cool and it's awesome. Um, but you know, I'm going to, I'm going to focus on CBS two right now. And anyway, I don't have any, any consoles that I can play this game on, but we got it at the, at the arcade and that was probably, so I didn't, I didn't really know how to play fighting games before CBS two. I, I could do moves, but I, I didn't really know how to play the games themselves. I didn't know how to learn how to play the games either. And so CBS two was kind of the first game that I really was able to apply those, you know, develop all those, those kind of basic learning skills for. Guilty Gear was the first game where I got to, to start at the same point as everyone else in the arcade 
and kind of learn in parallel, right? Because we all had functionally the same base set of skills, whether we're coming from Marvel or, or, or CBS or whatever. And so we all got to learn the game pretty much at the same time. And not many of us had home setups, so we were mostly just learning by, you know, by playing games uh, at the arcade, you know, you know, everyone picks soul for the first couple days. And then a, a couple of people look up move lists and start picking other characters. Then eventually each person kind of has their character, right? So we had a couple slayers. We had an Eddie who is ruining everybody's shit. Some people stuck with soul. There was this one guy from the anime club who always picked Kai, of course. And I played chip. And if you don't know much about Guilty Gear, Chip is the, he's, he's a super fast uh, ninja weeaboo who becomes president of his own country, I believe it is. That's a shtick and excerpt by the time you get that far in the plot, is he's, he's, all of his, all of his VO is about being or becoming president or something. Um, oh, and he used to be a drug addict, that's cool. And... I picked him up, and he was I, he had a lot. He was a lot of fun. Uh, I had a copy of Guilty Gear X that I picked up for Dreamcast, and so I could practice a little bit of stuff on there. There are significant differences between X and XX, but Chip is not that different between the two compared to other characters, right? Like uh, some characters didn't even exist. Like Slayer wasn't in X, and a lot of characters who who were super significant in in XX weren't in X. But I could I could play Chip, and I could practice him. And that's the stuff that I practiced would mostly be relevant, somewhat relevant when I went to the arcade. And so that was kind of my first, my first time picking some really new stuff and learning it and giving people a hard time. Like I could usually make, um, we'd, we'd have weekly tournaments for Guilty Gear and I could usually make it past most of the soul players. Uh, I'd go 50-50 on a Slayer and then I'd lose to, to an Eddie or a Biken. That was usually either uh, Steve Yu or Eric Choi playing Eddie and Biken because I just did not have, know how to deal with those matchups whatsoever. And so then I started going to to look at, at look for more Guilty Gear players because there weren't that many people playing at Berkeley, and so I couldn't get good matchup experience against other people. Or you know, if it was finals week and, and no one was really coming to the arcade, then I'd have to go and find other places to play. So I ended up playing with uh, Serlin, who's another chip player, David Serlin. Uh, I ended up going to a Sunnyvale tournament and playing. Uh, I think Cannon Brothers actually ran that tournament, which is kind of crazy. I hadn't seen them in a while. Um, and I, ha I, uh, I even went into the city and played, uh, sorry, San Francisco, bleh, and, and played with Tragic and Moko, if you remember those guys. Uh, Moko is known mostly for, I think, like his Alpha 3 combo videos. And Tragic is one of those dudes who shows up at every fighting game in the beginning, drops a bunch of like week one or day one tech videos, and then disappears forever, right? Um, that was, and, and, and that was kind of one of my first times really like striking out outside the comfort of my own like arcade crew and learning how to play fighting games, right? Like really trying to, to, to do kind of the Ryu thing a little bit more and learn whatever I could from everybody, not just going to the same arcade every day, right? So then that, that's when my learning process kind of changed and it became let's learn from everywhere and then take like test my learnings back at my consistent competition where everyone's getting kind of steadily better, but the guys aren't really getting as much outside influence from it, right? Um, and so that that, that was I mean, it's kind of a fantastic time, right? Like, and I'm you know I'm high school senior already pretty much done in school. I don't give a shit. And I, I realized afterwards that I think one of the reasons I got into Guilty Gear was because. So it's like CBS2 is a fantastic game, but there's a lot of bullshit that you need to learn how to deal with, right? Uh, you have to deal, you have to learn how to deal with super poke heavy teams and characters like Sagat and Vega and Blanca, who like that takes years if you're new to fighting games to deal with that stuff, right? Like, and to be able to beat those characters. Then you have to get your execution up at a really high level. Uh, you have to learn teams and you're always like plugging stuff in and out and whatever, um, trying to figure out how to deal with problematic matchups or whatever. The, the the solution to to your problems in CBS2, like there sometimes it's a decision, like, oh, I need to drop this character over this character, or I need to change my order, or I need to change my groove, or whatever. There's like an infinite amount of experimentation, and that's fun. It's it, it makes the game a laboratory, and frankly, like that's 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 kind of a really cool thing about it. It's the thing that I love about it. However, 
Guilty Gear, you, you don't have that choice because you only can, you can only pick one character. And eventually, what you realize is that every character is in fact a separate fighting game. There's almost no overlap between different characters in terms of their 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 kind of their their like their, their game feel, right? Like the rhythm that you get into when you're hitting buttons on the stick, or their their systems, their unique mechanics, that kind of stuff. Like they're very very different. To this day, I pretty much like I've I've spent most of my time on Chip. I spent a little bit of time, like, like then the, the, after Chip, it's, uh, I played Axel for a while. I played Eddie for a while. Um, I've got, like, a really, really bad Eddie, but he's a lot of fun to play. He's just so much fun. Um, or Zotto. Um, and then I've got, I, I've, I've messed around with, like, Soul and Kai for a little bit. And that's pretty much it. Like, I don't really know how to play with, like, any of the new characters, like Ramlethel or, or Elfelt or Leo in Exerd. I didn't really mess with ABBA as much, or much at all. Um, I played Johnny for a little bit back when XX first came out, like, but the fact is, is that each character is so much, uh, there's so much stuff that you have to do, right? There's so much stuff that you have to learn, and, and there's, there's such, such little overlap in how each character deals with the matchup that Guilty Gear is actually, like, each character is playing their own game, and in order to learn how to beat a character, you need to learn about what game they're playing, right? So I play Chip, and he's actually one of the most straightforward characters in the game. He's got some Rekkas, he doesn't really do that much damage. He's stupid fast, but once you touch him, he dies, he explodes. Like, uh, Serlin used to joke that Chip is the best character in the game until he gets hit, and then he's the worst. And even when you hear him get hit, and you will, because I'm gonna get blown up on stream after this, um, you just, you hear his, like, pitiful little death wails, and he goes, like, no, 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 and it's just so painful to actually get hit with him, right? Um, but I've, I've never played a character quite that, like, basically, you know, like a, a traditional pixie character before. So, like, his mobility is fantastic, and it's super fun to just zoom around the screen. When you get in someone's head, you feel so good. And then the moment they hit you, they hit you with that meaty-ass combo that takes 70% of your life, then they feel so good. Right, it's, it's it's fascinating to me. Right, um, Zado or Eddie is is the character that has his weapon because Guilty Gear is kind of a weapons based fighting game. His weapon is his shadow, which is a sentient being. It's this being that's actually possessed a corpse. So, you know, when 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 the character is named Eddie, it's because the the shadow is actually uh, the agent controlling the the man. Um, but basically, what happens is also he has a bunch of slow kind of screen covering attacks, which. Uh, which, which all involve the use of his shadow somehow. And one thing that you can do is you can summon the shadow out as a second character that also responds to your, your joystick. So if you move forward, both on the if you hold forward on the stick, both characters move forward. And if you press a button, when you press it down, your main character does an attack. And when you release it, the shadow does a corresponding attack. So you have to start thinking about what order you're releasing buttons and cording stuff. It's like, it's like zero uh, charge buster stuff in Marvel 3, except 20 billion times more complicated and it's it's so intimidating once you realize how it works right because usually what happens is like no one picks him at first because no one has any idea what he's doing then one person comes and picks eddie and learns how to play him and then they just ruthlessly murder your ass and then you're like wait how does that work and if you're a scrub you go nerf that shit but if you're uh an og then what you do is you say well I need to learn how to do that to other people because that looks hella fun. And then you realize how much work that person put into getting good with Eddie and you're like, oh, oh, okay. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's just these, these, these amazing characters. Um, and yet somehow, right? So they have these amazing characters with, with really cool visual design, like lots, like really cool thematic stuff. Um, and move sets and, and mechanics like you wouldn't believe right like the new character i think her name's jacko in a in guilty Gear revelator that's the one that they're, that they're still releasing in arcades in japan um like has almost like a, a pseudo like moba style mechanic in her stuff right um you have you have johnny who has like like coins that he just throws that charge up one of his special moves it's just uh and, and he has like a finite amount of coins so you have to budget those over the course of a round which is pretty cool um you just have so many characters with so many unique systems and there's and so if you want to learn one you have to just spend like days weeks months of your life learning that character i play chip i'm a chip player 
and I've tried other characters, but the amount of time that I've sunk into any character compared to Chip is completely minimal, just because it takes so much time to learn how to play these characters. And it's not necessarily like an input difficulty thing, it's also just a matter of the, the strength of the systems they have in this game, right? So, so uh, the, 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 basically, Guilty Gear is full of broken shit, and because of that, it, do, it, doesn't, it isn't actually broken. And it's not, this is not in the Marvel sense where everyone has, like literally ev pretty much everyone has broken shit. Some people have more broken shit than others, blah, 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 blah. Um, it's, it, it's, it's kind of, a, it, like, it, the, the best way that I can explain it is in Marvel, everyone is playing a game where, like, you get, you, as soon as you hit someone with something, like, you get your troll face on, right? You're just like, right? And you're doing your loops or your, your, your more doom stuff or whatever, right? You're just like, hey, hey. Gotcha, right? With Guilty Gear, it never feels dishonest. Like, you might feel sorry for someone while you're hitting someone with Eddie Unblockables, but you don't feel that sorry because you know how much work you had to do to get good at those. And you know that someone out there has the answer to those, right? So that if you get hit by Eddie Unblockables and you lose because of that, it's not because of anything other than hard fucking work. And that's what it feels like on both sides of the equation, right? Like, I don't get salty when I play Guilty Gear because I know that whenever anyone beats me in Guilty Gear, they fucking earned that shit, right? Um, and I've played, I, like, and the thing is, like, I've spent, like, probably hundreds and hundreds of hours playing this game, and I suck. I'm bad, right? Um, I get blown up all the time. But I got nothing res but respect for people who are good at this game. And the reason, I think, the reason that they, get, that they get away with this, right, that they're able to give everyone broken shit, so this is kind of stepping into the, the design side of what makes Guilty Gear so cool, the reason that it's so awesome um, and so diverse and so deep with everybody is that, uh, and then the, the reason that you can get away with de de developing characters that have kind of all uniquely uh, super powerful stuff is because they give everyone a, a really strong design skeleton. Which, which, which basically means that there's a certain core set of things that everybody uh, can do, right? So, in, you know, and, and every game has a, has a core design skeleton, right? So, like, in Street Fighter, you can assume that every character has, uh, you know, kind of X amount of normal moves. They can block. They have whatever kind of series-defining mechanic they've introduced in that game, whether it's, like, parry or alpha counter or, you know, like, multi-level super meter custom combos or whatever. Um... And they and and you know that so that that character skeleton is pretty pretty kind of uh, simple, right? So Street Fighter usually goes with pretty simple character skeletons, um, meaning that and and they don't diverge that far from that, meaning that there aren't that many characters that have super unique stuff, right? Um, so like in Street Fighter Four, everyone has a focus attack, and the focus attacks are different, but they all work functionally the same. Right? The differences are a matter of nuance. And yes, they have impacts on how you play the character, but it doesn't really mean that uh, the, it's hard to grasp the idea of what you do. Right? In Guilty Gear, every character has a few things. They have multiple different defensive options. So like in Exerd, um, everybody can block, air block, Faultless defense, which basically is a, a kind of push blocking that eliminates chip damage, lets you air block anything, including grounded attacks, and pushes them away a little bit at the cost of meter. Uh, you can instant block, which basically means that you tap back as soon as the attack happens, and you're in block stun less, right? Um, and you can, I forget what they call it, whether it's like backslash or force break or whatever, but basically it's kind of a parry, right? It's kind of like a guard impact in Soul Calibur. Right. So that the, oh, and and everyone has an alpha counter. So right there for for uh, fifty percent of your meter. So right there, everyone has like six defensive options or something. Right. So when you're thinking about how to deal with something, how to deal with an, uh, a problem of like this, you know, this this knockdown into unblockable or whatever, the answer is almost always get good. Right. It's you have all these different tools to mess with. Right. And yeah, it might be hard, but. This is like you, you know, the, the developers give you the tools to do to deal with pretty much anything, right? So, that to me is fantastic, right? Now, I'm not at the level where I, I can consistently do stuff like instant block or even know when I'm supposed to instant block. And the nice thing is that it's not like Street Fighter 3 where the parry system, the base, the parry system basically means that the answer to everything is parry, right? Uh, instead, it's the, you know, the, the answer in Guilty Gear is, oh, well, if you're in this situation, you know, 
These were the mistakes you made that led up to that situation. And you can deal with those mistakes by flawless defensing or instant blocking or force breaking a predictable media or whatever, right? Um, sorry, I, I, force break is the parry-ish mechanic. I don't really know what it's called. Um, so you don't need to know everything. You just need, need to know what your tools are at, at your disposal, right? Um, so that is fantastic. What you end up with is a, a bunch of amazing, unique characters that you never, and like, I've never seen characters nearly as lovingly designed and intricately designed as uh, Guilty Gear characters. And, and it, it's weird because it, become, it gets to the point where you end up with this, like, almost very strong relationship that you form with the characters that you played, right? So, like, I play Chip. I've been a Chip player for, like, a third of my life. Actually, more than that. About 12 years, right? Um, that's kind of amazing to me. Right? And he's changed from iteration to iteration, but the core of his identity has always stayed the same. Right? And that to me is, 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 is amazing. Like, I, I mean, I haven't really played, been a Ryu player for that long. And even, even when I have been a Ryu player, it's mostly been in Super Turbo and uh, Street Fighter 4. Right? I didn't really play much in CBS 2. I didn't really play much in Third Strike. I played in a little blah, 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 blah. Right? So I'm not a Ryu player in those games. And to be a Ryu player in those games it means pretty different things. Right? I mean, ST and Street Fighter 4 Ryu are about the closest that he's ever been. But usually he's in a different place in every single game. And with Guilty Gear, Chip always feels like the same character, even when his tools are vast, are, are significantly different. Right? Like, use the teleport for different things, use the normal different things, whatever. Uh, it's like coming back to a new Guilty Gear game kind of feels like coming back home to like, you know, an old friend or something like that. And it's really cool. So the, the, the kind of consequence of having that, that incredibly fleshed out design skeleton, these amazingly diverse characters, is that it takes forever to learn how to play the fucking game. And by learn how to play the fucking game, I mean not it takes you forever to learn your moves or it takes you forever to, you know, learn your bread and butter combos or whatever. Um, it's... It's more like, so when I, when I say that you learn how to play a fighting game, like you're not actually playing the game until you have a functional understanding of what your character is supposed to do in every matchup, right? It's like, otherwise it's like playing chess without knowing what the pieces do, right? If you don't know what your piece is supposed to do against the enemy piece, then you're not actually playing Street Fighter or any fighting game. You're still learning how to play. And that's cool, right? That, that process is a lot of fun. And you can spend years on a fighting game and never, and never really start playing it. And that's, and that's basically how Guilty Gear works, right? Um, because in or each matchup is like its own fighting game and it takes forever to actually get to the point where you're, you're legit playing a game against another human being, where you both have a strong understanding of what they're supposed to do, what you're supposed to do, and how, you know, like how that clash happens, right? If you don't, if you don't know what range you're supposed to be in, if you don't know what pokes beat their pokes, if you don't know like kind of where their danger zone is and where your danger zone is, then you're not actually playing the fighting game yet. And for Guilty Gear, it takes so long to get there. I wanted to get there with Xrd, but I couldn't. I just couldn't spend the time. Like, um, I, I, you know, when Exert came out, I, I actually gave it a legit tournament shot for a while. I went to Frosty Faustings. I went to CEO. I competed a bunch of turns, and my goal was to make this game my main competitive game, and then I, I eventually just fell out because I couldn't. Um, I, I didn't have the discipline to stick with it. But with Guilty Gear XX, I had that feeling, and it felt amazing. Um, it, it just, it felt, it, it was one of those games that, that kind of puts you in awe of what people can do. And for a little while, like, even though I, even though, you know, I sucked, right, I was not that good um, in the grand scheme of things, like, just having the chance to be kind of uh, recognized as a chip player and to have that be, ha like, feel like I'm, I'm kind of, um, that I get to express myself with that character and that, that, that the way I play chip is functionally different from the way everyone else does, right? Like the optimal paths in this game are not nearly as clearly defined as they are in other games, right? So a good chip can mean a bunch of things. And you can look at like top level Japanese chip players and you can take lots of, lots of inspiration from them. But fundamentally what you're doing is your own thing, right? When Smash Brothers talk about how, you know, so-and-so's Marth or Fox or whatever is just revolutionary and different and special, like, I, I don't get that a lot with Street Fighter characters, right? Like, I don't, I don't see, you know, when, when Tokido plays Akuma and Infiltration plays Akuma, like, the differences are subtle. But in Guilty Gear, the differences are huge. There's just so much space for you to play and, to, and, and so much space for you to make uh, amazing kind of creative decisions about how you play with your character that I really think that, and this is, this is uh, a, like a, a joke that I make a lot, given a long enough time, everyone who loves 2D fighters eventually becomes a Guilty Gear player. 
because another, you know, maybe a Street Fighter has been out for too long and it's been the dominant game for too long and you got bored. Well, Guilty Gear is there and there's always something new to learn in Guilty Gear. There's always something to practice and there's always something that you can be be working on and and you know then as, as soon as you get good that's when they release another game and and you're like great we'll I have to learn this all again whatever but it's 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 truly it's like they I, I hate it when people use this this phrase this cliche in reviews but it's true for Guilty Gear it's a love letter to the, to the genre I really think that Guilty Gear developers are doing some of the most creative amazing stuff in fighting games and uh, the fact is is that they do it because like as far as I can tell like. You know, they don't really give a shit about people learning the game in, you know, in days or months or whatever, right? Like, they have their core audience and they're kind of building that game for them. And I just think, like, given, again, given a long enough time, eventually I, I just come back to Guilty Gear because it's one of those games that uh, gives me everything I want in a 2D fighter. Um, and it's it's just... It's, it's, it's weirdly, like, pure and amazing. And that's cool. Um, so, yeah. That is... That is my my ode to Guilty Gear. My shout out to anime. Um, it's been twelve years, and like I'm not I'm not playing Guilty Gear every day. I'm not trying to front like that, but uh, I do love the game. I do love the community. Um, that's actually one thing that I've been learning about a lot recently because you know it was only with Xrd that I really got back into the anime community. Is that like straight up? If you play anime fighting games, you are in a niche of a niche, right? Like, and you know this, so that like. Dudes playing playing Street Fighter, at the very least, when you explain what you do to other people, they mostly remember what Street Fighter is. And that's cool. Like, everyone knows Ryu and Hadouken and blah, 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 blah. With Guilty Gear, you're like, so I play this fighting game, and it looks like a Japanese cartoon, and it's really cool. And and, and everyone just can be like, oh, oh, that's, that's, that's awesome, man. Like, good on you doing your thing, right? Like, it's... The only people who play these games are going to be super fucking weird. And that's fantastic. Because it means that, like, just when, when you walk into a room of Guilty Gear players, you're like, oh my god, I don't know who you are, but we have something very profoundly, pro pro profoundly like, niche in common, and that's fantastic, right? Like, um, and I had fallen out of anime pretty much after, like, uh, XX Reload. I played some of the other games, like Slash... Um, and accent corn whatever but i don't really play them that seriously i didn't i didn't go to tournaments or whatever so i didn't really kept up with a lot of the people who've been playing you know guilty gear games pretty much straight through and i and i met up with people who i played back with the in the xx days and that's awesome right but I also met a lot of cool people who are just like oh hey you're cool you play street fighter but you also play guilty Gear. that's awesome come over here and play some games and they whip my ass and that's fantastic um but it's just like i don't know man it's 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 something else. It's something special to get into to a community that niche. And the fact that they've continued to grow they've, and they started to really build their scene so it's not just like, oh, here's this anime side tournament at a Street Fighter major. It's no, we're big enough. We got our own majors. We don't get, we, like, Street Fighter can be the side event or Marvel can be the side event. That's great. Like, that's fucking awesome. Um, and I think that, like, that's something that everyone, everyone else who's trying to build up their community can learn from when they're, you know, when they're, they're trying to figure out like, Hey, how do we, you know, how do we get more tournaments for this game? Or how do we get more streams for this game? Right. If you build something that's amazing and that people love, even if a small amount of, of people just love it a lot, then they'll find a way to help you build it. And that's fucking awesome. So yeah, shout out to anime. Thanks for listening. As always. Um, I hope this, uh, I don't know what you call these like rants or whatever. Um, I hope you had fun watching. Um, if anyone has any questions, I'm happy to take them in chat. And uh, if you like this stuff, then please consider following my channel. The button's right on the lower left corner underneath the player. Um, I'm trying to do this like every couple, you know, every couple days, every week or something. I have a lot of fun doing it. Um, so yeah, please follow the channel. It, it helps me figure out kind of what works and what doesn't. And like, you know, if you like this, then I want to see you coming back. So now, um, this is when I cut into the Xrd stream. Yeah.